Hello and welcome to another screencast tutorial for Scratch on behalf of TazMcCarthy.com this time on using variables. For this example I've set up a very simple game as an example of how variables can be implemented. Firstly I've set up the cat that when the game starts our cat character will forever go towards the mouse pointer and under the cut I've also set up that when I press the space bar the whole game stops as if I had hit the red stop sign. For our devil character, when the game starts forever it will point towards sprite 1, the cat, and then move two steps towards it. But that's repeating over and over so it's going to keep on pointing towards the cat and moving several steps. So I'll just demonstrate how this is working. You notice that the cat sticks to the mouse and the devil follows it around. When I press spacebar everything stops. Now to our variables. All variables are is a special number that we want to control, a custom one. It can be for scores, it can be for speed, it can be for lives, it can be for whatever you like. To set it up you go to variables and you click make a variable. I'm going to set up one called lives. Now at this stage Scratch doesn't understand that you want this to be lives. The word lives is just a word to help you remember what it is. What I'll do is when the game starts I'll set the lives to whatever I want the game to start with. Now what we want to happen is every time that our devil character touches our cat we lose a life because that's generally how these games work. So we'll add in another one here when the game starts we want this to check over and over forever otherwise it'll just happen the instant we click the green flag and never again we come down and we've got one that says if put that on the inside if the devil is touching sprite one which is the cat We'll change the lives by minus one. Let's test this now. See our lives. We're on ten, but every time we touch, they go down. Now there's trouble here that as long as it's touching it will instantly go down really, really quickly. So we'll stop the game and we'll fix that. To stop it from changing the lives every split second really, really fast, all we need to do is put in a wait command. Now we've told it, once the game starts, check this over and over, that if the devil is touching the cat, to change the lives by one, but then wait one second for the cat to get away again. So we'll set up another example. When we hit the flag, our lives will reset to 10. And now every time we touch it, we'll lose a life, but there's a one second delay to give you the chance to get away again. Down to four, three, two, one, zero. Now somewhere else, if you like, you can get it to trigger a game over event. So when the green flag is ticked, check this over and over and over. If and we need to go to our green operators. You notice that the shape matches. Stick that in. If the lives equal zero, and if we come back under variables, you'll see a little shape here to drag out. If the lives equal zero, and then whatever you put in here will be triggered to end the game. So maybe you want it to play a sound and then stop the game. So we'll test that one more time. Okay, so can move the cat around, the devil chases me. Eventually if I let him touch me enough, the lives will go to zero. The game stops and the cat meows. 
Another example of variables might be for something like speed. If you have a car game, you don't want the car to move 10 steps every time. You want it to move a different amount depending on how fast it's going. So let's set up that now. We'll put in a new sprite, some sort of car, and then we'll right click or control click on a Mac and delete our cat. We'll quickly make our car a little bit smaller. So it doesn't take up the whole screen. And we'll add some basic control. We'll tell it that when we hit the left arrow that we want it to rotate to this side, steering. When we hit the right arrow, we want it to rotate the other way. So now we have some steering. Next thing we're going to do is set up a variable called speed. And we'll tell it as soon as the game starts to do this over and over and over to move forward speed steps. We might get it to also set the speed to zero when the game starts. So as you can see up in the corner the speed is set to zero. So when the game starts the car won't be moving. We can steer it but it's not moving. So the next thing we need to do is add acceleration and braking. So back to our key commands. When we press up, and all we get it to do is to change the speed by one. When we press down, we get it to change the speed by minus one. It should become very obvious what we're doing as soon as the game starts. So we hit the green flag. Our speed is zero, so the car's not moving forward, but as soon as that goes to a different number, the car will start moving because it's forever trying to move as many as speed is set to. So I press up once and now you can see our speed is set to one. So it's, this is repeating over and over and over. It's moving speed amount of steps. If I press up a few more times, the car will accelerate. If I press down, the car brakes. I can keep on pressing down to put the speed in minus and then we can reverse. You can see very quickly we've got the makings of a car game using a variable for speed.